Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for episode 18, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Oh my god, this episode was amazing. No kidding, this is definitely my favourite episode of the season. This was titled Godspeed, directed by Danielle Panabaker. She did such a good job. And oh my god, we got Godspeed. I got major chills throughout most of this episode. I'll talk about the points where I was like, oh my god, what's happening? And I was freaking out a lot of the time. So, very excited to talk about all this stuff. I have so many notes to go through. This episode was cram-packed. And I felt like they did a really good job with the time that they were given. So, yeah, let's get right into this. So, I'm not going to necessarily be going through this chronologically, but towards the end of the video, I reckon I'm gonna sort of just go through the different events. But, yeah, first off, let's talk about Godspeed. So, he first turns up, and his suit, number one, looks absolutely amazing. The only sort of query with Godspeed was with him standing still occasionally, I think it was mainly just early in the episode. I thought the CGI got better as it went on, but when he's sort of standing still when the lightning's going around, sometimes because the outside of where they were was so white, it kind of looked a bit fake, but when he ran, oh my god, he looked so, so cool, and it so worked, and he was a really good introduction for this episode. He even dropped the line when he first came on. He said, yes, I am a god the god of speed and I was freaking out I was there like oh my god yeah what a great opening line and so it's at the point where Godspeed first turns up that we get Nora finding out about her powers for the first time so it's to be noted she actually never knew Barry was the flash she was never told that and we'll talk about that in a sec when that revelation comes but Nora gets her powers because of her chip actually getting I guess fried by Godspeed's lightning because Godspeed throws lightning so he's actually really powerful because of his Z9 but he seems to be able to control his powers very well so he's a really really advanced speedster and it, it was just some holy shit moments you know reflecting Barry and how Nora got her powers and there was some brilliant parallels to season one like with her running into the truck and her waking up to music when she first got her powers very very absolutely similar to how Barry got his powers and you know the way it went so it's very nostalgic and it went really well and so he looks sick running and I'm talking about Godspeed it looks so cool but it was revealed also in this episode there was never a speedster with white lightning there was a list there was four colors that was yellow red orange and purple and so they talk about this weird purple speedster in this episode who just popped up once that's a callback to the Accelerator Man, really like that, just like, hmm, he just came and went. That's basically what he did on the show. So this was when she was in the Hall of Villains and she actually saw August Hart. So later in this episode, Godspeed is revealed to actually be August Hart, which he is in the comics, and his lightning was white, and then in some of the footage you could see it turn blue, and that was because it was revealed he was using Velocity 9, and he was trying to make it so it would last forever, because right now he had this band, and he had to inject himself like Zoom, and so it was very temporary, but he was finding a way in order to make it so he was a speedster forever, and they follow most of the comic book origin story with him working, I believe it was in the CCPD, I could be totally wrong, he could just be a student or something, but we see his face, but yeah, Godspeed's a one episode thing, we'll talk about him later in this video. So jumping back to the start of the episode, we have Barry and Team Flash all arguing with Sherlock because they were like, why are you holding this in? Sherlock was like, obviously I was just investigating, didn't want to, you know, reveal anything that wasn't concrete, so they have that conflict, and we see the 2049 Nora flashbacks told through them actually reading the book, reading her accounts of what had been happening, so they find out about Godspeed, they find out a bit about Leah and everything in this episode through the book, and it was just a really neat way to tell this origin story through them actually reading the book so they're experiencing it at the same time as us so like I said with the parallels we start off the episode with Nora in 2049 being late as a CSI just similarly like how Barry was you know crashing into people running being late for the crime scene and so this crime scene has happened to be 
Godspeed's first attack or like maybe his second attack or something so he was looking for this medicine and we first get to meet Leo so Leo's a CSI in the comics she is actually a speedster I thought they would make her a speedster in this episode but she wasn't she was just Nora's best friend she was working with her and along with all the other revelations in this episode it was said there was never a speedster since 2024 obviously the reverse flash is still alive but he's in prison but there's never been a speedster who's been out in the open essentially since 2024 and they're in 2049 so that's 25 years ago which is a very long time so they talk about the weird purple speedster like i said and so we see leah and her their best friends essentially and then we move on to one of the fights so Godspeed and Nora fight about three or four times in this episode, so we're going to quickly, like, go from one thing to the other, like, later in this video, but, yeah, I'm basically not condensing all the Godspeed stuff into one bit, so it's gonna come bit by bit, just to tell you guys. So, Godspeed fights Nora again, and this is in the car park that had been leaked, we knew that this moment was going to happen that godspeed was going to kill leah and we thought leah was the speedster but she didn't turn out to be a speedster so godspeed actually phases his hand right through leah that was a moment of stone cold villainous and i love that that's probably one of the best moments in the episode where they're fighting and they're running around and then he just like goes over and kills her you know so he could essentially get away that was the main reason so that was a shocking moment I was expecting it though because of the leaks but a really great moment nevertheless so we see old Iris in this episode just for a little bit she has this weird kind of Diana arrow sort of wig on like that has streaks of gray which I didn't really buy but you know that's not such a big thing that was just a really brief moment in the episode it was kind of nice to see a future version of Iris we didn't get future versions of Team Flash but they got mentioned that they all knew that Nora was essentially a speedster and they used the dampening chip on her. So Nora finds out about that. She's essentially just really pissed off that she's been lied to her entire life. And that leads to her working with Thorn and then essentially coming back and meeting us in the present. So like I mentioned earlier, Godspeed is revealed to be August Hart. And we get the lightning, you know, it streaks with blue just at one point in the footage. And you see that he's using Velocity 9, so I wasn't expecting them to bring back Velocity 9 so soon, like, because that was such a big point in Season 2, I just didn't expect them to ever come back to it, so it was interesting. And we got some other references in this episode, like the Tracy Brand building, I think there was Troy Enterprises, so some nice callbacks and cool forwards to potential characters. And so Nora and Thorn eventually in this episode find their way together and so Nora essentially goes to Thorn in order to ask him how can I stop Godspeed and it doesn't seem like Thorn actually knew about Godspeed so maybe he just is actually from this present time maybe he's not from further in the future than this maybe he had no idea who Godspeed was or because he was so kind of small and he only appeared in the future obviously it wouldn't be in the Flash Museum but maybe Thorn knew about him but also it kind of seemed like maybe he didn't but he did mention his name but maybe that was because of Nora saying it but I don't think Nora actually told him about Godspeed but just about the speedster so maybe he knew about him I'm not sure but when Nora actually found out that she's a speedster it was so much fun it was just like seeing her as Lady Flash as Leah said it was just great seeing her mess around being like oh yeah I'm trying to be a speedster kind of reminded me of how when Supergirl first found out she was able to use her powers, she was like flying into the hills, flying like, and um, basically screwing everything up. So that was very reminiscent of that and I really liked that part of the episode. And so, as I said, Nora keeps on re visiting Reverse Flash and she's essentially trying to find out why and how can you stop a speedster that is this powerful and so he essentially at first is like mm, a bit hesitant but then he gets fully into it and he fully helps her because you know there is a, an element of him being selfish in this way that I think she's going to help him get out of prison before the end of the season I reckon so that's just a theory right now but yeah so 
Thorn actually finds out and deduces himself that she is a speedster and he's actually called a professor at one point and that is a massive callback to Professor Zoom which is Thorn in the comics so they sometimes switch between the names and that was a nice comic book easter egg and he gets tortured in his prison so Nora finds out about this and she's kind of shocked but the prison guard is doing it probably because he knows that Thorne's time is essentially up and you know he is paying for what he's done in the past. So Godspeed returns nearer to the end of the episode and he loses his powers at one point there in the lab and it's Nora versus Godspeed and he loses his powers he looks so so cool when he doesn't have the CGI but also he looks cool with the CGI especially when he's running I think the CGI like I mentioned earlier got a whole lot better as the episode went on and that scene was amazing that was like a complete parallel to zoom injecting himself with velocity 9 so Godspeed actually injects himself and he does that very very similar action to zoom and oh my god, that F that moment was so freaking cool, especially we actually properly got to see his suit with the close-ups and him actually using his powers to essentially power himself up like some sort of Super Saiyan or like Zoom, for instance. And so Thorn does his season one speech to which he did to Barry and then he just did to Nora and this was a major chilling moment. This was probably... Maybe my favourite moment of the episode. I got major chills surging up my body because of the speech. And it was exactly the same. Or really, really similar. And so she was there sort of embracing the speed force. As he said all of this inside of her. And then she actually isn't able to do it. But then she does it. She baits Godspeed. And he says, run Nora, run. Chills moments. This episode was so so great on the nostalgia and how it was presented so yeah godspeed by the end of the episode he's defeated they use the satellites he's struck he hits the wall and then he falls down in the future i forgot what the building was called the central city something but he's defeated and he's in ccpd custody so will godspeed return he seems to be just like a one and done villain but i think he can return in the future because he's not dead He's just in custody, maybe he will break out at some point and come to the present and he'll be a bigger thing. Or maybe we get to see like a different version of Godspeed, maybe like from another Earth or a Time Remnant that is, I guess, a bit harder to defeat because this Godspeed, yes, he was super powerful, but with the help of Thorn, he was able to be defeated pretty easily. So I don't think it's necessarily a waste. I thought he was amazing in this episode, but I wished... He wasn't just a one and done thing that that's what we've all been hoping for that he would be like the season six villain at least we got him he was really really good in the brief amount of time that he was in the episode actually he was in the episode a lot but i was hoping for more like more episodes that he was in so hopefully he returns it is open for his return because he's just in ccpd custody and so as we head towards the end of the episode thorn reveals to nora that there is not enough time and then Barry and everyone is essentially reading and seeing this at the same time that he is actually running out of time and by the end of the episode Barry actually confronts Thorne in the ending scene and he is essentially there to confront him and Barry is actually glad that Thorne's time is up that he's finally going to pay for all that he had done to Barry but to the world and everything like that but then we move on so this is near the end of the episode so Nora finds out that buries the flash she finds out that by Gideon and so she's in the room she sees all the flash costumes like I think maybe Nora's one was there don't really 100% remember but there was a load of suits essentially and there was lots of versions of the flash ring the one she picked out and she gave at the start of the season was the flash ring version 16 I do believe and we saw a version 19 so there is in fact new versions of the suit so don't worry yes the suit at the moment's not like the best thing ever but there is a lot more that actually changes in the future so this is not the ultimate sort of future flash suit because there is new versions because she only picked the version 16 from what i can remember and recall so she finds out barry is the flash via gideon and at that moment it was crazy like 
everything changed for Nora at that specific moment. So there is a video left and oh my god, this was probably actually my favourite point of the episode and this was even better than that season one reverse slash speech and this was Barry's message from 2024 when he disappears or dies or whatever and you see the red fucking skies in the background I was there like holy shit this is crisis on infinite earths this is when it's happening obviously now we think it's happening in 2019 because of crisis on infinite earths actually coming so everything has changed but in this version it seems like that message is actually still from 2024 the red skies are there you see more like you hear in the background there is tons of explosions fighting and everything like that so this is at the point where reverse flash and the flash fight it out and he disappears and so this is crisis on infinite earths i just freaked the fuck out over this scene and i'm sure many of you guys did let me know what were your thoughts on that message i thought that was so chilling i got chills up my spine once again really really effective all right so let's move on so nora and barry at the end of the episode they have this talk in present day and Nora is by the end sent back to the future and that's kind of shocking because everyone on Team Flash sort of came to grips with Nora's story by reading what was in the journal and so did we but Barry is like no I do not trust you he straight up tells her and he takes her personally back to 2049 and Nora's like, I will never work with the reverse flash again. And Barry's like, I do not trust you. And if you ever try to time travel, I will feel it and I will stop you. I will time travel myself and I will essentially just stop you from doing anything. So you need to stay here. Don't do anything else. And so this is him stepping his foot down. And so he won't let her come back to the present day. And they say goodbye and the camera pans out. And Nora's alone. Just a great massive ending scene to this whole episode and this whole origin story, which is told through obviously the perspective of the book, and this sort of wraps it up. And we know in future episodes Nora's still going to be actually working with Barry, so that's an interesting point to note. So maybe she does time travel, or maybe it's Team Flash having to talk Barry into accepting Nora back and they're going to work again with each other at some point you know I think next episode actually so I haven't seen the trailer for the next episode but my trailer breakdown will be out probably later today so yeah Godspeed is only a one-time villain for now but like I said there's opportunities for him to return I'm a little bit sad that he wasn't used more like in more episodes maybe a season six villain maybe this was just the teaser for him being a season six villain so i'm a little bit sad about that that he potentially the way that they presented him he was only here for just this episode i think he did a brilliant job in this episode he was really really actually quite effective and he reminded me of zoom and yeah i really liked him a lot and this was a great origin story for nora and it linked him with Godspeed, which made it even cooler and made it more interesting. Like, we got to the introduction of Leah. We saw this different version, this future version of Iris. And we saw her meeting Thorn for the first time, finding out her motivations to actually work with Thorn. And essentially what was revealed in this episode was the reason why she was working with Thorn was due to the fact that she wanted the help when she found out she was a speedster. How can I stop Godspeed? How can I stop someone this good? Because she couldn't do it by herself. She didn't have a mentor and you could compare it to Barry, but Barry had Thorn. Like even though he didn't know it was Thorn, he thought it was just Harrison Wells, he still had that mentor and so with her paralleling to his origin story, she has that new mentor of Reverse Slash teaching her how to do this, teaching her how to phase, and do all these tricks because without him she wouldn't have been able to defeat Godspeed. Godspeed would have reigned on forever so he's such a crucial part and his time is nearly up as you saw at the end of the episode with the timer ticking from 10 minutes to 9 minutes so I don't remember like last episode at what point the timer was if this was later in the future or the past but I'm presuming whatever's happening when that timer goes to zero it's not going to be good but I think Thorn is actually going to be saved and brought out of the prison by Nora probably maybe in the next few episodes because we know in the finale he's loose he's in the 
present day and I think with Nora being abandoned by Barry and left in the future, Nora's going to go back to Thorn and that's how he's going to escape and that's maybe how Nora's going to somehow go back to the present and maybe earn the trust but also at the same time feel like maybe Thorn can help her but obviously he has other motivations probably to get out and survive is his definite main motivation so thank you guys so much for watching this video i know this has been a super long video but there was so much to unpack in this episode i truly loved this episode i think danielle panabaker did such a good job there were some nice little scenes that she put together and some brilliant callbacks so i'm glad she got this episode she really delivered and God's people is amazing, although I'm a little bit sad he may not sort of come back in the future, but I hope he does at some point. But they followed the origin story of him, with him being August Hart. I was very, very satisfied, and there were some major chilling moments, especially my favourite moment in the episode, like I mentioned, that Red Skies message. That was amazing. So anyway, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.